And we are joined again by Catherine Templeton, Republican candidate for governor in South Carolina. Ms. Templeton, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, well, you have been in government for a while now. You've had several jobs in government. Tell me why you think you should have the top job. Sure. So I've had three careers in my life. I used to rotate shifts in Jonesville, South Carolina, right down the road. And then I went to law school and fought labor unions for 15 years. And then Governor Haley plucked me out of oblivion to actually fight labor unions and bring jobs to South Carolina. So I worked for her for four years, and no good deed goes unpunished. In that first labor secretary role, not only did we bring 7,500 jobs to South Carolina families, but we also cut government. And so after about a year, she said, now I want you to go cut government in one of the most you know, bloated, bureaucratic, bossy agencies that we have, Department of Health and Environmental Control. And so I went over there, I told her, I said, you know, I gave you four years, I'll do whatever you'd like for me to do in four years. And that's, that's what we did. We, you know, we took a buzzsaw to government. And when she left, um, you know, I, let me say this differently. When I left to go work for the state, I had two five-year-olds and a seven-year-old. And I gave it everything I had. When I went home and then when Governor Haley left to go to the um, United Nations, I was not about to let all the work we did just be as if it didn't happen. And, and I felt the jungle growing back. You know, um, Governor McMaster had been running for governor for 30 years, and we hadn't elected him any of the times that he'd run. And it felt like all the politicians sort of gave him a pass and said, well, we'll wait our turn. And so my babysitter and I sat at the dining room table and said, we're running for governor. And it really was just she and I, the first you know, three months calling everybody we knew. And you know, it, it's, it is one thing to want to be the to have the top job because you've been a politician and you've walked up the ladder. It's another thing to have actually run state agencies that the governor's in charge of. I will be the only governor we've ever had that has actually run state agencies, been accountable for our tax dollars, been accountable for outcomes, and actually done well at it. You know, so I think that we need somebody at this point to operate, do the math, to make sure our values are represented in Columbia. A state newspaper reported that part of that buzzsaw was $1.2 million in settlements with people who lost mm -hmm. their jobs while you were running an agency. Is that the kind of cost savings we're talking about? I mean, that's a lot of payouts. I would never, ever, ever apologize for saving the taxpayers money. And we saved them $68 million in, um, in, in you know, wasteful spending. The, that, was another, um, that was another agency. The, I never settled cases, mainly because I always felt good about the decisions we made. You know, we helped a lot of people out. And for example, when uh, we, we had a big reduction in force, and when we had that reduction in force, it affected you know, dozens and dozens of people. Three of those people decided to go get a, a trial attorney and sue the state to see if they could get some money. And I said while I was there, no. We made the hard decision, we made the right decision, we're going to stand by that decision. They appealed it all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, and we won that case. So they cost us money, but I don't, I don't shy away from making the hard decisions. And as soon as we have a governor who is afraid to fire people that we're paying, then we might as well hand it over to the liberals. All right, since you, you mentioned the word fired, there's an outside group running an ad yes. that says you've been fired. And yes. Quotes Donald Trump with his, with his catchphrase. Have you ever been fired from a state job? I was fired from the Port of Charleston after five weeks because I released corrupt state contracts to the public and then actually participated with the FBI and SLED in what has turned into being the indictment of the people whose contracts they were. In fact, part of the reason I'm running for governor is because I'm not just saying I'm going to take a bus all to corruption. I did. It made me so angry. I gave up a quarter of a million dollar job. I would do it again. It was the consultants that they are investigating in Columbia that have been on Henry McMaster's payroll for 30 years. Um, you know, both Richard and Rick Quinn have been indicted. Rick Quinn pled guilty. Um, Henry McMaster's current chief of staff and his former chief of staff as attorney general have both been taken to be interviewed at the grand jury. And so um, I'm not sure many people would wear being fired as a badge of honor, but being fired because I did the right thing for the people of South Carolina is wonderful. Now the rest of that ad I don't even need to address because Ambassador Haley has, has called it inaccurate and all the people who um, actually thanked me for my service with a standing ovation um, when I served the state, you know, have weighed in and said this is ridiculous. You weren't asked to resign at DHEC? No, absolutely not. In fact, even better than that, when I went in and as the labor secretary, I told Governor Haley four years. In fact, when she tried to move me over to DHEC, I said, no, 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 no. I've done what you asked me to do at labor. 
And, you know, and I said, so I can go home now, right? And she said, you said four years. I said, I said no more than four years. So it's always always been a joke, um, you know, throughout my time there. And there's a lot of on record. I mean, you know, well before I left, it was really literally at the four year mark. I did a twist around the, um, the dance floor during the inauguration. Um, you know, in October before I left, the board announced that I reminded them again, guys, we need to get a new director in here. So uh, you mentioned the, this corruption issue. I, I keep asking all the Republican candidates the mm. same question. That is a largely Republican scandal in Colombia. The people being charged and indicted are Republicans again mm -hmm. and again. These are Republican. Uh, Mr. Quinn is a Republican or was a Republican member of, of the state legislature. Why elect another Republican to clean up Republican corruption? Well, he had Democrat um, clients. They may or may not, not still indicted be with in this him. Case, right. Not indicted in this case. But he also had Democratic clients. Um, you know, that's why you elect an outsider. And that's been my point. That's been the, the genesis of this entire um, election is you need someone who is not a part of all that corruption in the swamp. I mean, Richard Quinn and I you know, have never met, but I know how government works. And those are the two different things. To be a conservative outsider means to not be part of the corruption, not owe any favors, can't be bought, never run before, will never run again. But you know, that might speak to four million South Carolinians. The difference is that I've actually run a state agency for four years working for Governor Haley. Donald Trump thought, must have thought I did a pretty good job. His team called me a triple threat when he um, asked me to come to, the, to Trump Tower and consider me to be his labor secretary. And maybe it's because I'm a mom and a fighter and I can't be bought, but it's probably because I rotated shifts, because I've reformed government, because I've actually had a job. And you know we, we need to bring jobs back to America. All right, let's talk about jobs. Uh, state jobs, core functions of government. Yes. Police officer corrections officer, mm -hmm. teachers. Mm -hmm. These are jobs where people are not getting pay raises. Right. Uh, police departments are having a very difficult time staffing their agencies. So yes. are prisons. And teachers. Staff yes, teacher absolutely. Shortage. It's a yes. huge problem. How does the state provide the resources to get those jobs filled with good people? The state has the resources. The state has enough money. You know, we all want to be safe. We want to make a good living and not have it taken. We want our children to reach their God-given potential. And you know, that's We've got education, we've got law enforcement, I mean, everything that you just said, those are the core functions and roads to get us to all these mm -hmm. places. The government in South Carolina just throws money at problems. They don't spend it wisely. Do you know that we have between $14,000 and $15,000 per student, per student, more in our rural counties, and we're not getting it to the children and the teachers. We're spending on bureaucrats. When I was at DHEC, for example, I took $7 million worth of bureaucrats people making eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars who are good people. But we didn't need all of that and we helped them out the door and we reinvested five million of that money into nurses who serve the people, into septic tank inspectors and restaurant inspectors, boots on the ground. And that's why we have to get somebody in there who's seen it, who understands how to do the math, who understands where the money's going. They can take the resources we already have and actually get them to the people of South Carolina. I did it before and I can do it again. Does that mean pay raises for teachers? Absolutely, the state? absolutely. But what it doesn't mean is it doesn't mean tax hikes. It doesn't mean more money out of my pocket and your pocket. It means taking the money we have and giving pay. In fact, there are almost 10 different school districts with less than a thousand kids in them or around a thousand kids in them. That's costing us, if we would just consolidate those districts instead of paying that, paying that full complement of bureaucracy in the administrative district office, if we consolidated school districts, we could give a $1,500 raise to the teachers tomorrow. So you're in Spartanburg County. We've got seven school districts here. There's right. five in Anderson County, right? So you would want to consolidate all of those? You have to do it with a scalpel, not a hammer, where it makes sense. You know, for example, in those school districts where there are 1,000 children, it makes sense to consolidate. It may not make sense here. Okay. Uh, another jobs question. Mm. When I talk to employers in the upstate, they say, we can't find nope. skilled people to do right. We got jobs. Truck drivers in particular, somebody's got to get things from point A to point B. They can't right. find them. So how does the state provide employers with the skilled people they need? Last night, we were asked a question, all of the candidates, what company would you recruit? Name the company you would recruit. And everybody tried their best. And it got to me and I said, you know, recruiting's important. When Governor Haley was selling South Carolina to bring those jobs here, I was one of the business people standing behind her, backing up what she was selling. But now we have 60,000 jobs open in South Carolina. It is cheaper and easier to sit on the couch and collect welfare 
than to take one of our many open jobs. And idle hands leads to an opioid epidemic that's killed more than the Vietnam War. So in South Carolina, we need to make sure our children and our people take our jobs. And so that means bring shop back to high school. That means make our technical colleges technical colleges again instead of junior colleges where it's cheaper to have freshman and sophomore English and math and then transfer to a Clemson or a Carolina. You know, our lottery money didn't take care of our technical colleges. We have stopped in South Carolina in most places teaching technical skills. You know, a lot of children will go to college, but we have to stop telling all of them that they must. Because the point of education is to be able to support yourself when you get out and know what the opportunities are in front of you. So we have a lot of work to do with making sure that we have a trained workforce in South Carolina or none of those companies are going to come. I, I, I just want to clarify what you're saying. You said idle hands has led to the opioid epidemic. You're not suggesting that people, all the people who are addicted to opioids are because they no. were sitting at home not doing it. No, anything. absolutely not. But idle hands do lead to, you know, to trouble. Okay, when, uh, when it comes to the prisons, mm -hmm. we've had a, we did a story tonight on the news about yes, contraband that. going into prisons and yes. this issue of cell phones going to prisoners. The governor has proposed uh, using the state guard to patrol the outsides, maybe uh, uh, arresting people. They've had arrested a number lately who have brought contraband in. Is that not enough? It's not enough. You know, um, earlier this week, I, I announced to the state that I've asked Walt Wilkins, current solicitor in um, Greenville and Oconee counties, to be my lieutenant governor. And the reason for that is because prisoners are jumping the fence in South Carolina right now. They're calling their buddies to come pick them up and drive them you know, out of state. Just in the year and a half that Governor McMaster, who was the uh, attorney general and should know this already, um, has been our governor, we have had a prisoner jump the fence last July, fourth week. Remember, we couldn't find him. They found him in Texas. Um, and that was related to cell phones. We, we're not making them serve their entire sentence. So a gentleman got out of, or a, not a gentleman, a prisoner, got out of jail in the upstate, came down to Charleston, created a home invasion, beat one of our mothers, took her four-year-old daughter out of state, and has now been charged with sexual assault of that child. He was supposed to have been in jail the three weeks when that happened. You know, the, the deaths in Lee Correctional down in Charleston and the riots were attributed by the Department of Corrections to cell phones, among other things. So jam the cell phones. I understand that the federal I mean, government right, and the FCC, I don't care. The FCC has said, you know, a bunch of appointed bureaucrats have said, no, we can't jam the cell phones, mainly because there's a, a cell phone lobby that doesn't want that to happen. I'm not concerned about the federal bureaucrats and the cell phone lobby. I'm concerned about the people in South Carolina. I'm concerned about prisoners jumping the fence and putting us in danger. Right now, unless something's happened today and I haven't seen it, there are two men that, that escaped from a prison in Orangeburg. I was at home, I guess it was two nights ago, I'm watching the 11 o'clock report. Now, I'm on record saying all the time, treat criminals like criminals. We need to bring back the death penalty and make it swift and, and final. And you, you know, can figure out where I live pretty easily. So I looked at my dogs. I looked at the television. These two guys from Orangeburg are still, you know, escaped. They had a suspicious person in Charleston. And I thought, I'm afraid to go outside and take my dogs. Just, you know, before I go to bed. None of us should feel like that. None of us should have that problem. And I do carry a gun, but it was in the car locked up, which won't happen again. So the bottom line is, is that we have to have somebody who will crack down on crime because safety is the most important key function of government. Walt Wilkins has put more criminals in jail than anyone else, any other solicitor in any circuit in the state. He has deported more illegal immigrants and also has a program when they come in to make sure and, and see if they're legal and if not, deport them. Um, he's taken on gang violence, MS-13, the Bloods, the Crips, which is growing in South Carolina. He's put corrupt politicians, you know, he's prosecuted them. I mean, this is, this is the partner we need to make sure the core functions of South Carolina are taken care of and that we're safe. The other reason I asked him to join me is because I've known him almost 30 years. We went to Wofford together and we share, about, we share the same values. He's an amazing Christian conservative. His wife is the best thing that ever happened to him. And, um, and, and he has the values that we want for a lieutenant governor if they have to step into the governor's seat, which, you know, has happened a lot over yes. the last five to ten years. It has indeed. All right, Catherine Templeton, Republican for governor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.